Busaini's 2007 intergenerational novel, A Thousand Splendid Sons, has kept a special place in my heart since I first read it in 2014. Not only did it leave an emotional impact on me, but this was also the women-led narrative that made me realize a character's strength doesn't have to come from her combat skills or grandiose speeches for it to bear any value when faced with conflict, especially when combined with the strength of others whom she cares for. Inspired by powerful survival accounts of women on the streets in Kabul, Afghanistan, A Thousand Splendid Sons follows two protagonists, Mariam and Layla. Despite coming from different backgrounds, they are bound by the same gendered oppression within their own household and in society at large. Mariam begins the story as an illegitimate child, naively optimistic despite her destitution and the stigma surrounding such children. Her hope is shattered when her mother ends her own life and her father rejects her, arranging her marriage with Rashid, a man 30 years her senior who would care for her instead. This union would only bring more distress to Mariam, however, as her miscarriages frustrate Rashid and reveal his abusive nature. By contrast, Layla, a bright and ambitious girl 17 years Mariam's junior, enjoys a fulfilling life with her family, peers, and boyfriend Tariq. That is, until missile attacks during the Civil War kill her parents, leave her wounded, and drive Tariq's family out of the country. Pregnant with her and Tariq's daughter, and being falsely informed of his death, she becomes Rashid's second wife for protection. Mariam's trauma would soon be echoed in Layla, the latter bearing Rashid a son, especially as women's rights in Afghanistan are progressively reduced. I always felt that Hussaini's portrayal of the heroines discourages us from regarding them as helpless victims. Indeed, their vulnerabilities are believable given the environment they are situated in. The novel depicts a system in which violence against women is commonplace and they cannot perform ordinary tasks outside the home without being covered and a man accompanying them, lest they are punished for it. It makes sense that they are given scenes to fear for their lives and grieve their lack of rights. Otherwise, they would seem less relatable to us as humans who recognize the endeavor to have our needs met. However, this does not mean that they remain submissive to the cruelty throughout the book. Friendship between women characters is essential to A Thousand Splendid Sons. Mariam and Layla become as dignified and liberated as they can be, considering the restrictions imposed on them, starting with the love they express for one another. Initially hostile and unable to understand each other, their dynamic over time is rooted in stability, support, and confidence. It subverts the trope that fictional women are in perennial competition for a man's respect, which, frankly, would be a rather juvenile route for a poignant story like this to take. Of the two heroines, Mariam has the fully realized arc. Living with Rashid has stripped her of her prior enthusiasm and desire to connect with others. To show change, she must be receptive to and cultivate bonding opportunities. Lila is pivotal to this development, as her demonstrated compassion and will help Mariam realize that she needs a family and should not comply with abuse. In return, Mariam becomes a mother to both Layla and her children. Moments of affection between the protagonists that could be a simple pastime for us, such as sharing tea and jokes, seem to restore their spirit. These cherished moments turn into the great risks they take to escape their situation or do normal things we may take for granted, like visiting Layla's orphan daughter. Their play reminds me of ABC News and Marvel's 2016 comic Madaya Mum, a real account adopted from a Syrian woman's text messages documenting the normalcy she tries to uphold with her family. Despite their limited resources and freedom while under siege, in the sense that what we might consider small sacrifices or routines are a mode of survival for them. As evidence in A Thousand Splendid Sons, some choices lead to even dire consequences. When Rashid nearly kills Layla for reuniting with Tariq, Mariam retaliates by ending his life with a shovel, giving the two a chance to leave for Pakistan with their children. Whether or not Mariam intended to murder him, I personally do not believe so in my reading, since she usually appears concerned about Lila's safety as opposed to genuinely dismissive of Rashid's well-being. 
Her act is by no means treated as an acceptable one by the narrative. It is possible for readers to acknowledge a character's selflessness while simultaneously disagreeing with her demonstration, since that would reflect the nuance of such a dilemma being received in our world. I almost put the book down the first time after Mariam's execution because of how much the entire scenario saddened me. How following the justice sought after by these characters meant lives had to be threatened or ultimately taken. The silver lining for me was what Mariam's resolve seems to imply, that she died happy to have finally been part of a complete loving family, purpose to set them on the path to contributing positively in their community. When Lila and Tariq eventually returned to Afghanistan with their children, they helped rebuild the orphanage their daughter once lived in, and Lila teaches there, being able to begin her career like she always wanted to. I think this ending strives to teach us that, no matter the setbacks, it is the responsibility of every generation to instill and maintain humane values however they can, and that this work must start with our youth, who will one day create the landscape for social relationships.